All right, mission, rummage through and look for the Allen key. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What's up guys and welcome back to my Jeep. Today we have another install. Well, it's an actual install this time. It's not me just fuddling around procrastinating before I actually install any kind of mods because I'm afraid I'm gonna fuck something up, but I'm still so headstrong that I wanna do it all myself. Today we're gonna be installing the 67 Designs Rail Mount, the kit that actually comes with a medium-sized arm, and I also bought extra a nano arm, an extra ball, for the rail mount and the little screw mount for a camera. Now this is what it looks like all set up. I'm gonna disassemble this entirely because I don't wanna add this much weight and strain on it while I'm trying to install it. In fact, they say you're not supposed to put any weight on it at all for the first like 24 hours for the glue underneath to cure. This seems like a pretty easy install. The only problem I have with it and the only problem that I could even foresee actually arising from this install is the fact that there are two screws here, but on the dash of the actual Jeep, there's only one screw hole. Now they say that you're supposed to use a power drill to drill a new hole there after you mark it out, but I'm actually just gonna use a little bit of force on the really soft plastic here, rather than actually using the force of a drill because drilling into my dash, especially with something maybe a little bit longer or a drill bit or something just seems really scary. So instead we're just gonna use pressure. Hopefully I'm strong enough and we're gonna go ahead and get this baby installed. I can add more arms if I want to. There's a lot you can do with this thing, so I'm excited to install it. The only sad thing about it is my little mini Jeep that's an exact replica of Reaper is not gonna be able to be up here in my dash anymore, which is kind of sad. But first, since you guys have seen me, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. Remember in my last video, which I filmed like a month and a half ago, which you guys have not even seen yet at the time of me filming this one. Confusing, I know. But it's been a lot more time than you are going to see on my YouTube channel between the last time I filmed when I washed, polished, and painted that little scrape on my Jeep. And I feel completely fine with the scrape now. I remember at the end of that filming, I was so dejected I sat there next to the wall and like felt like I was gonna cry because why did I make this mistake? Such a fucking stupid mistake. But today we are gonna take our time even though it seems like a presumably easy install just so we do not repeat ourselves again. I appreciate you guys coming along this Jeep modding journey with me. Another few things that I did that you haven't seen here because they weren't big enough of things that I did to make a whole complete video on just that. So I'll insert that here. I added the little organizer in the console here. I was actually able to do some common sense customization to make this stay, even though these grab handles are not necessarily for Jeep JL. And they're pretty minimal. They don't have that silicone backing. So they were just like kind of flying all around, but I'm really proud of what I did with it. And finally with that install, I got that little taste of being able to customize something and problem solving on my own that I'm pretty hooked now. Like it was really cool. It was a nice feeling. It was like I had a problem. It wasn't perfect. I made it perfect with my own ingenuity, and I know it seems like a simple thing, but for me, that was a lot. I don't know, like, I am set on actually modding my own Jeep because of how good that little tiny accomplishment feels. Oh, you guys. I'm excited for the bumper, the fenders, the inner fenders, ah, oh, the winch, and maybe a drive stabilizer. There's also two grab handles in the back. I had to buy this angled screwdriver because I couldn't put the screws through the top of the grab handles in the back without removing the entire top. And in the back, it's a real top, not a freedom top. So I couldn't just easily remove it and then put it back on later. I'd actually have to have someone help me take the whole top off. And I wanna make a whole video of me stripping Reaper down for the first time when I do this summer, taking off the doors and taking off the top. So I didn't wanna do that just for some dumb grab handle install. Also in the back, I did a lot of reorganization. So now I have the back seats up. I added my fire extinguisher, which looks so sexy. And I also streamlined what I was doing with my first aid kit slash roadside assistance kit. I put it on the back of the head of the seat rather than on the roll bar because to me it just looks better and I have an open spot on the roll bar for another grab handle that I have. So every time I jump up and go over the back seat to grab something in the back seat of the Jeep, which is way easier than folding the seats down, that'll be easier. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this install of the 67 Designs rail mount. The rail mounting system that I got, I'll be linking in the description. As always, I always link all of the products that I use in any video in the description. But what it 
came with initially, and this was like a package deal, what it came with initially was the rail, the medium arm. I got it in matte. You can get it in silk or shiny or glossy or whatever, or matte. I like matte a lot better. And it also came with this attachment to attach your phone, which is really cool. It's like a whole system, like a starter kit or something. What I bought separately was the nano arm here, the attachment, I think it's three fourths screw for the universal cameras, like every camera has that screw on the bottom of it, almost always, especially if they're DSLRs, mirrorless, or any kind of like more expensive camera. You can also get a GoPro mount, which I'm thinking about actually getting because I have the new Osmo Pocket, which has an adapter so I can stick it on my backpack or on a GoPro type mount. I can also screw it on the bottom, but then it would be kind of tall. If you've seen that camera, you know what I'm talking about. It's like five inches tall. One problem I had was I thought when you bought the Nano Arm, you were gonna get another ball mount to attach to the rail mount, but I didn't. So once I got it in, I was like, wait, where's the ball? And I had to buy the ball separately, which is like 19 bucks. It has a little angled wrench that I'm gonna keep in the Jeep now in the little Jeep parts bag that comes with the Jeep so that I can like move these around anytime, which is really cool. Right now I have it so that Jay can play with the phone while I'm driving and I can vlog myself if I want to while I'm driving hands-free. But if I ever wanna switch that up or I wanna move these around, you can easily do it with a little key. Release it a little bit, move it anywhere you want. It's fucking cool, I like it. So that's why I wanted to get this because I think the system is really sick. By the way, these are the boxes that all of the parts came in. They came in all separately. Here's the actual box for the rail mount. It's quite a bit bigger and it says JL Rail Base. For Jeep JL Wrangler 2018 to present. And of course you guys can get this stuff at 67D.com. I would like 67Ds at some point. I put all of the info and hardware in there. We've got a little sticker so I can put it up here. I actually wanna get the, the soundproof things for the hard top and start actually putting the stickers up there. This one's kind of messed up, but I like that idea that a lot of other Jeep people do. Here is the hardware and there was a little card I think that said where, yeah, it's still in here. Oh, oh God, it's cold, I gotta close this door. So fucking cold out there, man. I thought it was gonna be warm today, but with the wind, geez, it is fucking crazy. Okay, so it says installation instructions and you just use the QR code. Okay guys, so the first step is to remove this rubber tray here. This is the OEM tray. I actually want to though replace, since the rail mount sits up a little bit higher than the bottom of the tray, some people will actually cut it here which is super ghetto in my opinion because I might have to cover up screw holes that I create in this top dash here. So why the hell would I cut this and mangle this when I might want to stick this back? What I do want to do, because what I have is, hold on. I have this full set of these. You know what these are? They're like cup holder inserts, but for the whole Jeep. And I think there's one, I think it's this one. Is it this one? No, this one's too small. Okay, or is it this one? If you guys hear, no, that's way too small. Yeah, it's gotta be that one. So I'm just gonna throw this in here. If you guys hear in the background something that sounds like a walking dead zombie, well, that is my pool cleaner. If anyone knows in the comments, oh my God, I will like literally but not literally suck your dick. If you tell me why the fuck, my pool cleaner makes that noise. It's like it comes out of the water. I don't know why it comes out of the water, but it's ridiculous. Why does it make that noise? If you can help me fix that, because it wakes me up at all hours. So yeah, post that in the comments. So we're gonna take everything off of the mount. Very easy to do, as you can see. You just barely untighten it, slide it out. Oh, I'm gonna see how it fits real quick. So they say that you're supposed to kind of angle it in there. But I'm gonna take this screw out. It's hard to see. Okay, so it's like that. Then I'll put this in there. Then I will try to just drill through without any kind of actual drill and hope that it works. I think I saw a guy do it that way. So it shouldn't be that hard. Let's go ahead and actually use this mini ratcheting screwdriver because I think it <clears throat> has the right sizing. If not, I'll just grab my regular screwdriver. Go with the smaller one. This is actually the cutest tool for this job. Oh my God. Okay, one screw out and one to go. <sighs> All right. Come out. Screw is oddly long. Oddly long. Okay. I'm gonna try to seat this in there. Dude, my hair is everywhere today, I swear. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those screws back in. Or am I supposed to use their screws? <clears throat> Well, let's look at the instructions. Install the base and tighten the OEM fasteners. Replicating what you did in step three, install the base and line up the OEM fastener hole using the fastener. Push down firmly but gently on the base 
and sections to ensure the VHB makes a solid contact with the desk surface. Recheck the alignment of the fastener using the Phillips head screwdriver. So these are the four screws I believe that we're gonna be using in the actual dash. I need a smaller screwdriver. I will be right back guys. I'm going to go get my tiny pink screwdriver because I think this is the first time ever that it's actually warranted it. Okay, I am back and all I have is this, which is probably not going to work, but it might get it through for me. I don't know if this is working out. Let me get back into my stance. Oh, oh my God, it's working. Okay, now that I know it works, I don't give three fucks. I'm gonna fucking take the 3M tape off. Now that I know it will actually go through with just me applying pressure. Using this that doesn't even fit. It's not even the right screwdriver size. I am legit ready to do this. All right guys, the moment of truth, taking the 3M sit sticky stuff off the bottom and putting it in there. Okay, where, how? Where, how, and why? All right. I wish this could move. <laughs> oh. All right, that lines up. Ow, hit my head. That lines up. I don't wanna tighten it all the way yet because I wanna make sure, ooh, don't throw it. I wanna make sure they sit normal in there. All right, that seems to be good. Now back to what I was doing earlier. I honestly don't know what these two screws are for. Like, what are they for? Are they like a better looking version or something? All right, back at it. I just feel like this is a safer option than actually drilling into it. I feel like the only issue with this though is that it seems like I'm kind of stripping the screw because this is a little too small. Is this the biggest one? Yeah, so I'm gonna be stripping these screws a little bit, which is whatever, because I can just get new screws. You guys hear that? There's the pool again. <sighs> this is tiring. I'm trying to start the screw in there. There we go. It's going in. Whew. All right. Two in, two to go. And these two are closer to the windshield. So they're more annoying to put in. I'll start with the hard side. I'm a badass like that, you know? <laughs> I need to get my nails done. I'm like straddling my, <laughs> my emergency brake. Oh, you just gotta keep trying until you actually fucking poke a hole through there. Oh, I finally got it. Oh my God. All right, one to go. One more. Oh, actually burning calories doing this. That one's finally sticking. It takes me like five minutes of constant like light pressure or like as much pressure as I can give without actually like pushing it through the dash to make it actually seat in there enough to actually start taking it. But once you do that, if you have confidence that you can do it, I mean, any guy can do it. If I can do it after arm day when I'm sore as fuck, you can do it. And there's less possibility that you're going to be drilling into some important, crucial parts of your dash, which is my biggest fear here. That feels pretty sturdy. The screws never really stop spinning though, which is kind of the nature of the beast. If you're making your own holes and there's not a lot of stuff to go through, like I'm assuming this dash is a really thin plastic. So the points at which the screw is actually grabbing material is probably really thin. So you probably only have one thread of the screw actually holding on there, if that makes any sense. But we have done it, we are done. But here is what it looks like right now without any arms on it, with the little gummy thing on the bottom looking all nice and aesthetic. And you know what? I even think I can keep my little Jeep up here. That's pretty cool. I like it. I actually have an acquaintance that I met on Instagram who has a red Rubicon JL like I do, but he has a four door and he actually got one of these recently and he has the little miniatures up in the front too, but his Jeeps are smaller than mine. 
And he was saying that the only reason that he got the other version, the version that only takes up one side of this, is because he didn't want to get rid of these. And I'm actually happy that I don't have to get rid of my little replica Jeep here. All right, let's go ahead and put these mounts back on. Okay, so this is the way... Allen key, where did you go? Oh shit. That's what I knocked down! I knocked down my Allen key, fuck! All right, mission, rummage through and look for the Allen key. The Allen key's right here. What I knocked off is the bits for my ratchet screw, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Okay, so that's tight there. Easy enough. And then you want to make this actually sit on the top of the dash here so that it's not um, applying any tension to those screws. So I'm gonna loosen it real quick. And maybe angle it a little bit like that. And what I like is they have two places for you to angle it. So I can stick my phone in here. This is actually, there we go. I can stick my phone in there like that, and then I can angle my phone irrespective of the other part, which is pretty cool. A little bit of side to side, not as much side to side as I would like, but it's good enough. I can just like put it in a different place on the rail mount if I want it to be closer. But there you have it, that feels really sturdy already. And I think having the 3M tape kind of cure more is gonna make it even better. I can actually pin the little Jeep in between the two. Or be like that, oh, that is so cute. So, we're gonna put you on there real quick. Just to see what kind of angles we can get. Now, I don't think there's any way that this is actually gonna be heavy on the dash, this one in particular. So, let's see if I can do driving vlogs. Oh, that is sick. I think I want a little bit longer of an arm. I think I want a, a mini or a small or maybe even a medium for this because I'm every time I untighten this, I'm actually hitting the dash with it, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so if I'm there, that actually looks really good. Driving vlogs, this is sick, I love it. Oh my God. Yeah, I can still have the mini Reaper there, that's great. Okay, let me actually get into driving position because I moved this back for you guys. <sighs> okay. So while I'm driving, it's like that. So then maybe I actually want to move this with the Allen key. So Lucy, lefty Lucy, but opposite direction, I think. Yeah, okay. So what if I move it over here? Is that better? And then I angle it. Try to show it out. So it's great to do. Okay. So like that. Is that better? Ah, oh, this is so cool. All right, guys. We have set up the rail mount. We were able to retain our little Reaper figure here in the dash. And another, and actually the first, real mod is down in the drain. Down the drain. We did it. We did the installation. We did it without drilling. Next up, however, I am uh, quite afraid of this next installation. So I am going to be doing fender flares and inner fenders. And the inner fenders require me to drill holes into the subframe. I think six total, which is kind of scary, but I think I'll be able to figure it out. And I think I'll be able to do it. And I think everything will be fine. Hopefully the last thing for me to do here is to stick this Allen key in here. So if I ever need to change it, it's in here. Just like that. It's right there in the top. I'm excited about this because I did this, you know? This is why, if anyone questions me, this is why I want to do most of my mods myself because it's a nice feeling to know exactly what was done to your Jeep, how it was done, and that it was done with care and love because I am so skeptical and cynical of even really well-trained mechanics and stuff. So anyway, to not be a negative Nancy or a stressed out Sally, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some of the other things that I have coming. I bought the perfect front and back bumper. Oh my God. The front bumper in particular checked off all of my boxes. The back bumper, the only problem that I have is that it doesn't come with a bumper mounted spare tire thingamajig, which is something that I wanted, but it's whatever. I don't have to have it. I know that I want to reinforce my spare tire holder, but I don't know how yet. And because I don't have the spare tire holder weight alleviated from the tailgate and onto the back bumper, I have to maybe reinforce the hinges on the tailgate. I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions that look nice and that make sense with a steel bumper that doesn't have the hole for mounting the spare tire on the bumper, let me know. 
but the front bumper just checks off all of my boxes and it has an extra little thing to it that is just so perfect. You'll see, you guys will see. Patreon will see all of the mods that I do first because they are awesome and they support my bad habit of spending a lot of money on my brand new Jeep. And we have a bunch of other stuff coming, a lot of little stuff like I got some different Mopar floor mats, the ones with the red accents because the Jeep is red and I want to do the red accents thing and a few other little things, but those are the next things that are coming up. And for those of you who might be wondering why I'm doing all of this stuff before I do something like my drive stabilizer, new shocks, or maybe lifting, getting bigger tires, that stuff is mechanic stuff. And I want to intro to mechanic stuff by doing easy stuff like removing and replacing bumpers and seeing if I can handle it and whether or not I'm going to need to for the true mechanic stuff, take it to a shop. But I believe in myself. I think I'm a quick learner. I can pretty much just watch anyone do something once and then I'm able to basically do it like decently. So I have faith and I want to be the one working on my Jeep at least mostly. Though I am afraid of the electrical stuff. I do want to get this full skid plate system in red that I saw on Hawk's website, H-A-U-K. That looked really cool but I don't know if I want to do that one myself. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm just really excited for what's to come. I have more or less a perfect vision of what I want my Jeep to be, but I'm doing a lot of research on every single purchase that I make. Well, almost every single purchase. Oh, I also bought, or I was going to buy, I'm not sure if I did yet, uh, a license plate relocator for the spare tire. I'm not 100% sure if I want to retain the LED light that lights up the license plate. I think that looks really cool. But the Rough Country one that has the LED light, I'll have to splice more wires together, about six inches more of wiring in order to make it actually fit. Whereas I can just get rid of that altogether and I won't have to deal with electrical stuff. I am very afraid of electrical fires. Splicing wires together, I've watched people do it in videos a few times and it looks really easy, especially if you just use like heat proof electrical tape, you use the little heated up connectors, the, the connectors that you have to heat and then they heat shrink. Like it just seems easy, but it's also scary because it's electrical stuff and electrical fires are not uncommon in vehicles. In fact, I would hazard to say that probably a lot of the electrical fires that happen in Jeeps are people doing some faulty installs but at the same time you can take it to a shop and have someone like half asleep install your shit you don't know how it was installed yourself so you don't have confidence in it and then it sets on fire and yeah it's covered because they did the work but is it really worth it is it now thank you so much for watching this video like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed if you want more Jeep videos I'm gonna be linking the full playlist to all of my Jeep videos thus far down in the comment section including the day that I got the Jeep the Jeep ASMR which which is the video no one asked for. The wash, polish, and paint with the Mopar touch-up paint and yeah, this one. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed it. And I hope you like my new system. It's pretty cool. I feel accomplished today. This was an easy install. Took like way more time than it should have because I'm filming, but we did it. Good job, guys. Good job, team. High five. Bye, guys. How you do it, make it love Out of nothing at all Out of nothing at all I'm learning the song on bass. Oh, this is my childhood right here. Like this video if anyone else listened to Air Supply in their childhood because of their mothers. Out of nothing at all Out of nothing at all Your eyes, like a spotlight.